The yellow vest protests are giving headaches to the Macron government in France. Over the weekend, more than 100,000 protesters took to the streets in Paris. Some of them destroyed cars, broke windows and smashed stores. French President Emmanuel Macron had scrapped the fuel tax hike. That was the, the first trigger, the initial trigger for these protests, but clearly it hasn't helped his case. Several protesters on Saturday raised demands of the president's resignation. The protests in France have caught the eye of the world. In fact, the movement is now crossing borders. The Yellow West protests ha have spawned a similar protests across Europe. Last week, hundreds of people took to the streets in Brussels. Their demands were similar, if not the same. I think anger comes from far beyond taxes. I am listening to what people say. I read the placards. Some are asking for more horizontal society, a referendum, direct democracy. That's it. We have been hearing the same speeches for 30, 40 years, saying there needs to be lower salaries, higher taxes, more austerity. Just like in Paris, uh, the protest in Brussels was disorganized. Belgians pay the highest state taxes on diesel in Europe. While the cost of living has gone up in Belgium, the lowest earners are struggling to make ends meet. The protesters want their government to cut fuel excise duties, reduce the cost of electricity and water, increase pensions and lower the age of retirement. But unlike what happened in Paris, the protest in Brussels was mostly peaceful. As for Paris, uh, the protests this weekend got out of hand. Out of the 125,000 who marched the streets, more than 1,200 were arrested. Violent mobs went around the city, toppling cars and smashing shops. Our next report sums up the last four violent weekends for France. For all this to stop, we need a referendum. A referendum on the resignation of Macron and a rewriting of the constitution. This would be really great. We get a chance to talk about the big issues that are important for not just France, but for the rest of the world. My thoughts especially go to all those who fell victim to these acts, notably and for example, the business owners who had their storefronts destroyed and their stores ruined. We have to be attentive to these victims who are legitimately waiting for repair. Justice must be done and we should do everything in our power for it to happen. My office is fully committed to not let the atrocities committed in Paris during these days of movement go unpunished. We cannot promote the idea or think that it is possible to come and break everything and to commit serious violent acts on Saturdays as we go home without being worried and without thinking of what the justice system will do.
French economy is perhaps the biggest casualty of these protests. Dozens of businesses were vandalized. Some of them have been looted, leading to damages worth millions of euros already. The French Retail Federation told Reuters last week that retailers in the country had lost more than a billion dollars since the protests began. Most likely, the number would have gone up after this weekend, this last weekend. Another report claims that restaurant trade could have dropped by as much as 50%. France is known as a dream destination for several tourists, but the protests could have an adverse impact on tourism. The country's national hotel chains group estimates that New Year reservations are down by at least 10% already. Small and medium businesses have lost more than $11 billion due to the protests. Listen to what the French finance minister had to say. I think it's very bad news for the French economy, for business owners, for very small, small and medium-scale businesses, for artisans, for all those who counted on the year in sales to bring in higher revenues and maybe to pay their employees better. That will not be possible. So these are not good news for the French economy, which is more of a reason for us to bring this to an end as fast as possible. Protesters claim that this was supposed to be a peaceful agitation. So what explains the violence on the streets of Paris? Reports have now emerged that pro-Russia social media accounts are stoking anger against President Macron. Was there a legitimate attempt then by Moscow to stoke passions? Or is the French government trying to pin its failures on Russia? Our next report explores. <laughs> For the last four weekends, angry French citizens have brought the city of Paris to a standstill. Many are blaming the Macron government. Critics of Emmanuel Macron say that he underestimated the protesters. But the French government has launched an investigation into possible Russian involvement in the Yellow Vest protests. Reports say most of the tweets came from the Russian state media outlets. Russia has been criticized for using social media to influence elections beyond America. Similar claims emerged during the 2017 French election. Allegedly, the Russians hacked the Macron campaign. Tens of thousands of internal emails and other documents were leaked. The Macro campaign had termed this as a massive and coordinated hacking attack, but these attempts failed. In fact, after taking power, the French president introduced a law against fake news. Les pouvoirs du régulateur, qui seront par ailleurs profondément repensés durant l'année 2018, seront accrus pour lutter contre toute tentative de déstabilisation par des services de télévision contrôlés ou influencés par des États étrangers. If the allegations from France are found to be true, it will only add to the tensions between Russia and the West. But the meddling charges may not be enough for Macron to fight the biggest crisis of his presidency. Bureau Report, we on World is One. Amid all this chaos in Paris, enter Donald Trump. The American president has found a way to start a fight with the French government in a tweet. Trump said, and I quote, the Paris Agreement isn't working out so well for Paris. Protests and riots all over France. People do not want to pay large sums of money, much to third world countries, in order to maybe protect the environment. Chanting, we want Trump, love France. According to several fact checkers, none of the protesters in France were chanting, we want Trump. But members of the French government had a strong rebuttal for the American president. The French foreign minister had this to say. To Mr. Donald Trump. Le président de la République lui a dit aussi euh, nous ne prenons pas parti dans les débats américains, euh, laissez-nous vivre notre vie de nation. 
In the past few months, Trump has taken on Mr. Macron, criticizing him for his policies on issues like climate and defense. The Turkish president, Recep Tayyip Erdogan, was also critical of Emmanuel Macron. In a statement, he blamed the French authorities for quote-unquote disproportionate violence towards the protesters.